Daisy. And I'm Terry. And this is the Monday, Monday Mindset, Mindset Podcast. Podcast, where we share things of interest to us and hopefully to you. So let's get started with episode number 90. It's another zero week. And this week, it's Terry's turn to be in the hot seat. What have you got to share with us this week, Terry? Well, Daisy, I went back to one of our tried and true favorites, as well as one that is usually very concise and easy, one to share, but also easy to get ready for. <laughs> I last night realized I hadn't prepared something, so I was frantically listening. And every episode of some podcast that I wanted to listen to was an hour and 40 minutes, an hour and a half, an hour and 20 minutes. And I thought, there's no way I'm going to be able to, one, listen to that enough times to share it and distill all that information down to something presentable. So that's right. I went back to Quick Brain with Jim Quick. Oh, it's a good one. Because they're always concise and easy to share. Yeah, and usually nice, actionable things too. That's right. But one of the things I found, and if if our listeners have not listened to him, I highly recommend this podcast. I couldn't stop listening to them. So I just listened to one episode <laughs> after another. Um, so I did finally settle on one that I wanted to share. And the podcast is Quick Brain, and the episode is 264, Quick Study Tips for Long-Term Retention. Hmm. Sounds helpful. So this episode I think is really useful for anyone who is needing to learn some information that they want to retain. And many of us, when we went to school or when we prepared for something, we may have done that cramming kind of studying where you just tried to put as much into your brain as possible, but you'd never retained it. You just had to kind of hope that you held on to it long enough to get to the exam, regurgitate it, and then release it all. So he talks about the idea that, you know, this really can be useful to us if we have to learn something new. Maybe some of us are taking a class or working on a new academic program or a certification program, or maybe we're helping someone else in our lives, maybe our kids or someone else learn something. So we can help them as well as helping ourselves. So as I said, his are always quick that is his last name, and also very to the point and actionable. So the first thing when you are wanting to study something for retention, the first important piece is to have a goal. Set yourself up knowing what you're working on getting from what you're going to study. So asking yourself numerous questions before you read a passage or a chapter or before you do an assignment. And just to get a little sciency on us, what this does is it actually taps into our reticular activating system, which directs our focus, makes us more alert. Mm. So by priming ourselves with these questions, it's almost like opening filing drawers or filing folders so that we have places to put the information. Mm. So this is the first important piece. Yeah, it makes perfect sense when he talks about it, doesn't it? And Absolutely. it's also probably the opposite way you've been taught Absolutely. at school. I just feel like I just want to hurry up and get in there and try and memorize this stuff. But mm. this tip, I think, is really important. So all learning is state dependent. So it's really actually tied to having a, an emotional state. And when we're bored and learning something new... It's not something to really connect the information to. Most of us can connect to this idea that you have strongest memories of events when you had a strong feeling, positive or negative, but a strong feeling. And so studying in a really neutral, bored state does not help us grasp the information. It's not encoded as well. So some people do things to get themselves kind of livened up a little bit before they're learning. Maybe you listen to some kind of activating music or you have a positive interaction with someone. Get yourself in that positive emotional state. He then talks about that learning is really connected to the environment in which we're learning. And that can greatly affect how much we retain. 
And he did caution, and I know most of us have heard this before and lots of things about sleep and other things, but really encourage don't try to do the learning in bed because we have that tied to a slower emotional state, a calm emotional state. Mm. We have it tied to sleep. And so we're less likely to retain the information well. And basically our environment gets encoded in our learning. And some of us can probably think of examples of that. When I was studying for my psychology licensure exam, it was a horrible experience, but I did most of my studying at Starbucks with loud music blasting and headphones on. That vibe got encoded with my learning, with my remembering that information. So he talked about some things that would be important in the environment. He encouraged to use the same space, not to study in a new place each time, but to be in a routine of setting aside a place that is specific to the studying. He talked about the factors in the environment, like the lighting. Overhead fluorescent lights are probably the worst. Natural light being the best kind of diffuse sunlight. A good temperature, not too warm because that'll make you sleepy. Maybe a little bit chilly just to kind of keep you alert. Good airflow, just a good environment. And obviously for some of us, especially during COVID, this may be challenging as far as making sure that it's free of distractions. Mm -hmm. Some of us have kids (laughs) running around. Mm -hmm. You and I have dogs running around and you have cats and all of those things. But obviously, the more we can limit the distractions, the better the environment. Notifications. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. Turning off, um, and he does actually talk about that too, turning off maybe your social media things, disconnecting from some things while you're studying. And then he talked about taking breaks. And what a lot of us do is we have something to learn and we set aside a big chunk of time, like four or five hours. Our brain doesn't work on four and five hour chunks. It works on like 20 minute chunks. And so he talked about if you set up breaks, you can actually focus during the time that you're intending to focus and then you get a break. So let's say you take a break every half hour. So you're getting about 20 minutes of productive study time. One of the benefits of taking breaks I thought was interesting, and this goes back to psychology 101 for a lot of us, something maybe we haven't thought about in a while. But when it comes to remembering things, two techniques that help us or two concepts that help us are primacy and recency. Although in my notes, it says decency, but I know that it's recency. (laughs) And primacy is the thing we heard or experienced first. So if you go to a party, the first person you meet, you might remember their name because it was the first one. Or the last thing, the last person you talk to at the party might be the thing you remember because it's recency. It's the most recent. So when you take more breaks, you're giving your brain more opportunities for recency effect Mm. and primacy effect. You're starting and stopping. You're getting more of those times worked into your plan, which I thought was a cool way to think about it. Yeah, that's really interesting. So it's that middle bit that's kind of the danger zone from a... yeah memory retention point of view. And if we go for a long time in that middle Mm. ground, we're holding on to less. He also then talked about some important things to do while taking breaks that are helpful to support you while studying. Move. You've talked in various episodes about this, but the idea of movement helps our brain to work more effectively, helps with BDNF and all kinds of things for our brain. Hydrating. Our brain is mostly water. And so we need to stay hydrated for our brain to be working well. He talked about doing some breathing exercises, you know, box breathing or any of the breathing exercises. And again, to think about our brain, although it's pretty small in our body, it uses like 20% of the oxygen that we take in. So doing breathing exercises helps keep our brain active and alert. And then he also talked about He does some eye flexing exercises and it doesn't have to be anything fancy, but let's say, for example, you're reading a book or you're looking at a screen. 
So you're looking at something very close and your eyes are doing the same kind of trained, you know, motion for extended periods of time. During your breaks, look at something further away. Mm. Give your eyes a break from that close up looking. A lot of us take a break from our computer and then sit and look at our phone. And so we're not really flexing our eyes. So that's an important thing to take into account. And then he talked about another technique to use to help us retain things. And I, I kind of chuckled when I heard this because when I was in undergrad, I worked with this man at the university and he was a Scottish humanities professor. And his name was Dr. McKinnon. And he talked to all the incoming freshmen and gave them kind of a lecture on how to survive college. <laughs> and this is actually one of the tips he gave. And so I thought, oh my gosh, Dr. McKinnon <laughs> knew this all those years ago. But that is to do some active retrieval. So after you've learned something, mm -hmm. review it, quiz yourself. When you go back to study more, Reflect on what you've already learned. What pieces are you going to carry in with you? So doing this active practicing, it helps ingrain the information. And Dr. McKinnon taught us every day when you get to that class, go back and read yesterday's notes. Mm. It's five minutes. You're just sitting there. You don't have to do anything difficult. Just reread those notes. So active retrieval. And then the final tip that Jim Quick shared in this episode, and something that many of us know, but an important reminder, is that we do best when we learn with the intention of teaching it to others. Mm -hmm. It's the best way to reinforce knowledge, to help us encode it properly. He refers to that as the explanation intention. When you have the intention that you're going to have to explain it your brain works pretty hard to make it make sense and to encode it so that you can then teach it to someone else. So again, these are just really practical, kind of common sense things. But as you said, things we probably didn't learn to do. Mm -hmm. And I know in listening to it, I was reflecting, oh, I do that one wrong. <laughs> I sit in bed or I do this or I do this. So just finding ways to help make the effort that you put into your studying more applicable, more efficient and effective, I think can make a big difference. And for me, just thinking about it, I feel a little bit excited just talking about it because it's like, I used to dread studying. It's like that boring, laborious thing. Mm. And the way he talks about it, it can be energized and have meaning to it. Yes, that that circles back to that state dependent part, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I thought it was really interesting when you were you were talking about the the taking breaks, that whole primacy recency thing that was mm -hmm. that was completely new to me, but made sense. You know, I've heard about the and practice myself the you know the focus timer approach and I can totally see the importance of doing quite a specific range of or selecting from a range of things in those breaks you know a break mm. is not to switch your notifications back on and go and check Facebook or look at your phone or, or whatever it is a break has to be that stepping away from the learning environment and going and doing something very different like you say it usually involves some kind of movement be it from breath movement to physical limb movement to eye movement mm -hmm. ideally you know all the above at the same time in a Absolutely. few minutes which is perfectly possible to do the other thing that came to mind would be this is a good way of combining and bringing in that episode i did with um andrew huberman talking about the different um having that really focused study time tapping into ultradian rhythms these 90 minute cycles and i think i mentioned that i sort of broke those in half 
but also this idea of harnessing the dopamine serotonin difference. So um, especially if you're thinking of uh, the typical study, like, um, you know, when you're at school and you've got a range of subjects, it's sort of sifting your subjects out and doing those black and white, clearly defined kind of studying in the morning with the dopamine that it works better mm-hmm. for. And then the the more um, subjects that are blue sky thinking, thinking around and merging subjects together a bit more, slightly more creative is going to work better when the serotonin is more elevated in the afternoon. So mm-hmm. I, I can see how you can combine some different thought systems here to really get the most out of studying for, you know, whatever it is, whether mm-hmm. it's at school, whether it's learning any new task, really, isn't it? Learning a new skill. Absolutely. And the piece that you just brought up made me think for high school students and college students, that whole timing thing is a little different than it is for us at this stage in life. Mm. And so really just think about what's optimal learning for them and using these strategies. And I assume based on the differences just at that stage in life with circadian rhythm and hormones and things, that serotonin and dopamine cycling may be a little different, but mm. also thinking about those of us who are working on something more creative. Maybe that's not the thing we want to do first thing in the morning, but do that, as you said, in the afternoon, but something that's more data driven, maybe that would be a better thing to do earlier in the day. And right. college students try to do everything after midnight. So it's just interesting thinking about applying some of this knowledge to what would work best in their learning environments. Well, all these kind of suggestions and hacks, if you will, are just trying to get the most out of how your body's working Mm. at a particular time or how you personally work best or whatever it is, rather than, you know, laboring at something like you just said that's data-driven that you could do in half the time in the morning that you would struggle more with if you were trying to do it in the evening. Mm -hmm. It just, you know, would make sense from a time management point of view. Let's get this done when I'm best equipped to get it done well. I can do it in less time. You know, it's going to have that reward Mm -hmm. feedback. I'm going to feel more satisfied. I'm going to feel more pleased with myself. You know, it's... It just helps, doesn't it, to know these things. When is the best time to be doing different things? And one of these moments where I'm thinking, wow, if I had known about some of these biohacking pieces of information (laughs) 30 years ago, a lot of things wouldn't have been such a struggle. And I think when I reflect back on most of my learning processes, young adult and into adulthood, our brain naturally also goes through that kind of, um, it prefers the path of least resistance. Mm. And I think what I've learned is the path of least resistance is wait until the last moment, <laughs> yeah. cram it in, it'll be miserable, but it'll be over. And unfortunately, I didn't really learn the value of really learning and really retaining and optimizing how my brain and body works, that I really just went for, yeah, but I do best when I wait until the last minute and sit down and write my 10-page paper on my way to class. One, I caused myself a lot of stress, but I really was not optimizing how I would learn best. Yeah, and you're just relying on one of the things really that you mentioned you're you're sort of putting everything on that recency aren't you Mm -hmm. let's cram it all in in the hope that it can just come out and of course one of the big problems in there is that you can't cram everything in that you need that last minute I had to laugh when I was listening to his episode because he was talking about that cramming and basically like you're putting everything in and then you're just hoping no one talks to you on your way to class because you don't want that information to spill out (laughs) it's like no 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 I've got to hold this weight um yeah 
Yeah, I mean, how many times, yeah, before you go into the exam room, you've been looking at those notes. Mm -hmm. I know when I was doing that science foundation course, and I really, I don't know whether, I think maybe I'd been listening to some of, some of these tips, and I did apply this different approach, especially that um, the explanation intention, the mm -hmm. knowing that you've got to teach it to somebody else. And I would be effectively, I wasn't actually addressing anybody else, but I would, you know, I'd effectively be talking to myself. Mm -hmm. But I would sort of put on a mini presentation with something that I'd learned. Right, I've got to explain this in the next five minutes to somebody else so that they can understand it. And it's a really good way of condensing a lot of information mm -hmm. and remembering it as you then present it in as clear form as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. And we all know, we all know somebody who's very good at this, who can take something really complicated and then they can present it to you in a way that's really quick and easy to understand. And we, it's not something we can all master completely, but it is something we can all practice and get better at doing, I think. Mm -hmm. That one is actually something somehow I did know when I was in undergrad. I remember my friend and I, my roommate and I would study together. We had mm -hmm. a, a class together and we would take turns teaching a section to each other as if we were the professor giving the lecture. Yeah. And so somehow we knew that trick way back then, but yeah, it did help. I probably even still remember some things from that class. Yeah. <laughs> well, and of course, it's tapping in to some of these other things, environment, state dependent, mm -hmm. you know, especially if you're doing it with a friend. So it's going to be a nice, pleasurable, sociable environment, mm -hmm. probably feeling quite good about it. If you're not feeling good, your friend is probably going to make you feel better. Mm -hmm. So it's you know, it's tapping into some of these other things at the same time. And we definitely took breaks. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to know what you got up to in the breaks. <laughs> this is when it all comes out. <laughs> Terry's study aids from <laughs> however many years ago. <laughs> no, I think, like you said, a lot of these things sound like common sense. And they are, and they sound quite simple and they are, but there are things that you need to be, we need to be reminded of, mm -hmm. I think. You know, as you're going through these, I'm thinking, God, yes, I need to remind myself mm -hmm. of that because you forget and you just fall back into that spending solid hours and hours and hours. And to be reminded, this whole, the importance of taking breaks and this primacy, recency, actually, you know, to improve the amount of information that you retain. It's mm -hmm. so important to take these breaks because all that middle ground stuff, not it all gets lost, but it's more difficult to retain. So actually just thinking you've done really well because you sat there solidly for four hours, you'd have been better off breaking that up. Absolutely. Good. Well, I've got my reminder list. Great. I've got lots of learning to do at the moment, so I shall. It's a good reminder to me to be applying these tips from Mr. Quick. Very good. I hope everyone finds some things in this episode that they can apply to help them. Or like I said, even if you have teenagers at home or young kids at home that you're also working with to help them, hopefully you can find some tips from this. I hope everyone has a great week. See you soon. Have a great week. Bye.